What do I do with my insecurity? Or better again, what should I do with my insecurity? I suspect that there's not a person on the planet that doesn't struggle at some level with insecurity. And in fact, I would suggest that uh, those that we tend to think are the least likely to have such struggles, the ones who are uh, brimming with self-confidence, are actually probably compensating for a severe lack of self-confidence. They're putting on a front. I think we all are insecure. But before we can answer the question about what to do with it, we need to answer the question, insecure about what? What security do we lack that we need? Let me give you an example. One of the things that I am profoundly insecure about is whether or not I am valued by other people. Do other people see me as someone worthwhile? I'm, I'm insecure about, do they value the work that I do? Do they find it important? Do they, are, they, are they grateful for it? Those kinds of insecurities uh, are always a part of my life and always have been, no matter how outwardly successful I might have been at one time or another. But when I look at that kind of insecurity, I have to realize, well, the solution here isn't to get myself in a position where I no longer have this fear. I don't need to collect or gather uh, the kind of encouragement that would undo this fear. I don't need to uh, make myself so much in demand uh, that... I can know that I'm in demand. I don't need, because that's not the goal. The goal shouldn't be, though I might feel that hunger. The goal shouldn't be for me to feel good about myself. So that kind of insecurity, one of the strategies that I have when I worry about things that I shouldn't, uh, sometimes I think, well, just go ahead and worry about it, you big fat dummy. <laughs> Go ahead and suffer through this needless worry because uh, you're dumb enough to worry about it. You should be punished by worrying about it. Uh, sometimes when I'm being a little bit more gracious to myself, I will say, yeah, let's stop worrying about this because it really doesn't matter. But what if I'm worried about something that does matter? Well, one of the ways that we deal with our insecurities on things that do matter is we try to look at the situation objectively. One of the things that is really profoundly helpful for us as uh, mature human beings, but it's very difficult for us, is to step back from our emotional experience and to try to look at situations objectively uninfluenced by those fears. Do I really need to be afraid? Uh, a lot of our uh, what's, what's the, uh, phobias, a lot of our irrational fears are irrational. If I'm scared to death that the plane I'm on is going to crash, it's a helpful thing for me to speak into my own life and say, well, now, wait a minute. This is how infrequently planes crash. I have a much better chance of winning the lottery than I do of crashing in a commercial airplane or dying in a commercial airplane crash. I, it, it's that, that, those are just the numbers. So maybe I need to stop worrying. Well, that could fall into both categories. That is, uh, that I don't really need to worry about it anyway, because at the end of the day, friends, at the end of the day, here's how we uh, solve this problem. If you're a believer then you have everything you will ever need. You have been promised more than you could ever imagine. And it is absolutely certain. There is no need for fear. Whatever happens here on this earthly plane cannot change where you're headed and what you'll have, what you'll be blessed with. If you are not a believer, 
and you are weighed down by the fear of what's going to happen when I die, what's going to happen to my eternity, or what's going to happen in my short lifespan, because that's all I've got. Well, I've got good news for you. It's not all you've got. And you can have the sure and certain promises of God for your future. All you have to do is repent and throw yourself in the mercy of God in Christ. That will make you secure in a way that can never be changed. 